How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you. And today we're going to be looking at whether or not aluminum-based deodorants actually cause cancer, debunking some of the myths that have kind of transcended over the years ever since I was a little kid on the internet. And just be really honest with y'all about uh, BO and some of, some of the recent trends I've seen in the beauty slash healthcare industry. So y'all know my big thing about um, my YouTube channel is giving you guys evidence-based and factual and applicable healthcare information. And one of the big things in the things that I believe in is the fact that oftentimes the media likes to overplay certain healthcare research and doesn't really do a good job of interpreting it to the general public. And two, um, there's a lot of misinformation that people use research studies to spread. So the research studies in, that in themselves are not necessarily misleading. It's that people take that data and over apply it and over make assumptions based on the results of the study. And today we're going to be actually looking at why I think the whole idea of aluminum based deodorants causing cancer is total BS, especially in the era of TikTok and Instagram reels and people just becoming healthcare and supplemental herbal experts without doing any form of formal training. I am not, this video is not dunking on naturopathic and natural medicine, but it is a dunking on the people on the internet who've become famous using that kind of jargon to accelerate their careers, but also harm so many people. If you think the pharmaceutical industry is corrupt, y'all, the, <laughs> the naturopathic supplemental herbal medicine industry, imagine, imagine the farm industry, but, but without any regulations. That's where we are at, basically, with the supplement industry. And you know, even though I am in residency and I'm living under a rock currently as part of my life, <laughs> as this stage in my life, I do see a lot of trendy stuff going on, on the internet, trendy products that are like booming right now in the beauty industry. And that is non-aluminum based natural um, deodorants that's out there, which honestly don't do a very good job at... Uh, stopping BO. So let's actually talk about aluminum, right? Uh, aluminum is a natural metal that occurs in nature. It's in a lot of food sources, but uh, deodorants, especially antiperspirant types of deodorants, antiperspirant means that these specific deodorants are made to prevent sweating in the armpits. Uh, they contain aluminum as uh, part of the ingredients. That's because aluminum keeps your sweat glands from, you know, secreting nasty odors and killing bacteria in the in the armpits that cause that odor. So when did this idea that aluminum causes cancer start from? Well, a couple of years ago when animal studies were being done on cancer risk and exposure to natural metals, they saw that in stem cells and rat populations, aluminum can induce certain cells to become cancerous. And Yes, the animal models, the cell models did show some evidence that aluminum can induce cancer cells with exposure to them. However, this is the biggest misinformation that I see happen in the media is that they take these animal model studies and try to apply it to human life, which is not necessarily applicable. Yes, we use animal studies and we, we use these studies to kind of accelerate our research into these avenues. However, animal studies themselves don't really prove much of anything to how it applies to human life. Another big concern that kind of linked aluminum to breast cancer and people got really, really worried about is that back in the early 2000s when breast cancer was huge, like, I mean, so many people were getting diagnosed with breast cancer. We didn't really have great screening uh, methodologies and treatments for breast cancer is the fact that you apply aluminum based deodorant in your armpits, which is right next to this area right here. This is called the tail of the breast. Um, and this is where the most aggressive cancers develop. So people who developed lymph nodes, cancerous lymph nodes uh, in the tail of the breast area, 
they were more likely to develop higher stage cancers. It was more likely to spread to other organs and other lymph nodes and then eventually lead to death. So if you took into account in like 10, 20 years ago, the fact that animal studies showed some form of cancer growth with aluminum, and aluminum exposure to breast tissue and the fact that if you just use logical thinking is that if you apply it in this area, it's gonna get easy exposure. Aluminum's gonna get easy exposure to the tail lymph nodes. And if it becomes cancerous, it's going to be very, very hard to treat. So yeah, if you take into account just those two facts, you would be very concerned in the fact that aluminum, oh my God, is in deodorant, in antiperspirants specifically, and holy cow, these things are being sold on the supermarkets and can cause cancer, but, but, when you apply it to human research, when you apply it to how much exposure we of aluminum we get outside of using deodorant, actually we get a ton more exposure to aluminum when in the foods that we eat, naturally in the foods that we eat. And if we, we look at these studies that have been done that tried to link human use of aluminum-based deodorants to breast cancer, all of it is negligible doesn't really cause that much risk at all, really. And you can't really prove it does cause any risk, absolute risk that can be attributable to people should stop using aluminum-based deodorants. So in order to further prove that this is completely untrue, it, this year in 2023, a research study, a meta-analysis was published. And if you don't know what a meta-analysis is the very, very simple definition for non-scientists is the fact that meta-analysis are the gold standards for us clinicians, how we actually change, how we practice medicine and give advice to our patients. Meta-analysis, what they do is they take, they take all the research studies that have been conducted on a specific type of topic and try to see what the results actually say and average all the results because if you look at one specific study it's not going to really mean much if you compare it to other people doing the same study in different forms of environments so this study looked at 13 studies that was done that was that looked at uh, the link between aluminum and breast cancer and six of those studies specifically looked at aluminum's in antiperspirants and its likelihood of causing breast cancer. And the results, everyone, is the fact that it doesn't it doesn't do much of anything. So yeah, um, that that that's that's the video. This is my video. So why the heck he does the previous research and the previous ideas that we had about aluminum and breast cancer not really apply to real life? Well, the fact the matter of the fact is that when you take into account the skin barrier, our ability, our body's ability, ability to prevent absorption of toxic amounts of aluminum, the fact that there are increased regulations of beauty products. Beauty products here in the US have so much regulations that it's like the perfume industry is going through like a crisis right now because they can't use any certain like scent profiles anymore because of the FDA cracking down on certain uh, ingredients. So it is highly regulated too. Um, lifetime exposure to aluminum is more likely to be with other environmental factors than deodorants themselves. And three is that you just can't apply basic science to human science. I mean, there's just too many factors at play. And a lot of these studies that they looked at, uh, there are a specific type of study called case control, which is entirely self-reported. There was no control um group that they followed over time they just looked back on people's records on whether or not they use deodorant and if they developed breast cancer but that doesn't look at all the other risk factors that someone might have to develop breast cancer not specifically to aluminum in fact the most the most significant parts of someone to develop breast cancer is one genetic predisposition to breast cancer, two, preventing yourself from doing things that have been proven to cause cancer, such as smoking. And the last thing is age, getting older. Getting older is one of the biggest causes, biggest risk factors for developing cancer because at the end of the day, we can't ever predict whether or not we will get cancer. We can't ever make a model that will tell us 
whether or not we will develop cancer. It's just a matter of life and the human experience. I don't care what Kim Kardashian says about that really dumb multi-thousand dollar test that she did on a CT scan. None of that will ever tell you whether or not you have the propensity to develop cancer. And the most important thing is when you hit that age where you should be getting mammograms, get those tests to detect it. Because the earlier the detection, the more we can prevent and treat cancers before they become terminal. Anyways, y'all, that's pretty much the take home message of this video. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I wanted to make a specific video for this. Breast cancer affects everyone, um, regardless of what gender you are, cisgender woman, anybody with mammary tissue, transgender men, cisgender men, transgender women, non-binary individuals, anyone has the propensity of developing breast cancer. And we have to make sure that we are spreading good information and that we are not fear mongering when it comes to clinical based research that's out there. I want to make sure that people are able to do what they need to do. They can smell good and not make excuses to smell bad, <laughs> no matter what the influencer that you like says. And, you know, make good decisions because nowadays the trend is, is non-aluminum based nature style, I'm not saying the brand name, nature style, non-aluminum based organic, blah, blah, deodorants that are very expensive and don't really do much of anything. You're still gonna smell terrible if you don't use one that's an antiperspirant involved in it. Anyways, that's it for uh, this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you gained some information from this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life, activism work, what I'm doing for residency. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Keep someone safe in your heart who has struggled with breast cancer in the past. And one day we will find better and better treatments so people with breast cancer can live long and healthy lives. Anyways, that's it for this video. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.